Ah, good evening, traveler, and welcome to the Penumbra. Tonight's tale is... Juno Steel and the Man in Glass. talking about this is my fault. There's no way in hell Zalatovna was ever going to sell the goddamn map. Well, I suppose we'll never know, will we? Your little 500 million cred stunt happened, and now here we are. So what, you think she just got excited and couldn't help herself? You've put that very concisely just now. Are you certain you don't think it, Juno? It was her favorite goddamn piece. I'm telling you she was never going to let it go. That was her plan from the start. There is a reason that gangsters in the movies synchronize their watches to the second. Time is the most important ingredient to any crime. One must never linger or become distracted from the task at hand, because every second spent at the scene is another second in which you could get caught. Or in other words, I know that my argument with Juno is pointless, but that does not mean I will not win it. My name at present is Peter Ransom. I am a master thief, one of the very greatest in the galaxy, and that is why I have been brought on to this criminal enterprise. So I have to say it is somewhat maddening that my captain seems set against letting me do my work the way I do it best, alone. In my experience, other people are just distractions. Especially this one. All right, look, fine, it's my fault. I don't oh, care, no, but... Oh, no, no, Juno, you will not get out of this by taking the high ground. But we need a plan, and now people are going to start taking the portraits and the statues and the little platinum robots and whatever the hell else they bought soon, and we need to get that stupid orb before then. It's a globe. But you do have a point. It's most likely that guests will start to leave after the dance, which begins in... half an hour. Well... Some good news, anyway. The ball should last a couple hours. That gives us time to put together a plan. No, I'm afraid it does not, Juno. The Gilded Globe of Reaches Far, in case you have forgotten, is on the opposite end of the ballroom floor. This may come as some surprise, but one generally tries not to steal something mere feet away from hundreds of witnesses. No, no, I'll have to take it now. The old-fashioned way. But, Madame Dauphin, you know, when do I get to meet that man of yours, darling? There. And while I'm busy deactivating the necessary cameras and stealing the globe, you can distract Ms. Zolotovna. Ta. Oh, Dolphin, don't let him slip away from me again. Ah. Preparation. Preparation is everything to a thief. Unlike this holier-than-thou ex-private eye who made his career charging into beating after beating and connecting the dots between his bruises. I took the files Buddy gave us, confirmed them with my own research, and then memorized the floor plan of this satellite estate precisely, inch by inch, camera by camera. There is freedom in the crowd, as I have said, and there is art in the thief's oldest techniques. To pocket the gilded globe is not just the sleight of hand necessary to make it disappear. It is also a dance, choreographed to incorporate every person in this ballroom. Within the first two bars, I've slipped into conversation with a massive drunken man, commenting on the smell of the flowers beside him until, intrigued, he lifts one with his massive paw and crushes the hidden camera in its blossom. Then I leave him, and as I imitate his stumbling and waltzing triplet, I collide with another patron hard enough to make them spill their wine all over the second hidden camera in the base of a nearby column. So sorry, my friend. But these are only my first steps. The movement has just begun. I start a fight amidst a triad and disarm two more cameras as the fists and glasses fly. I mistranslate a foreign dignitary's insult as a call for peace. And while she is distracted and confused by smiles and kisses, I destroy the camera she was staring at. And so it goes unto the second movement and the third until the time has come for the final chord. In the final bars, I approach that gilded globe of reaches far, my fingers poised to flourish and disappear, and then I am upon it, and these are the final notes, and then... Honey, I said look out! Madame Dauphin, Madame Dauphin, my goodness, what has gotten into you? Juno, you, I... Uh, nothing to see here, folks. Just saw a bee on the old hubby here, so I... Oh, you did it. Bees are extinct. That's what I thought, which is why I kind of freaked. <laughs> Would you all believe me if I told you I just really, really wanted a hug? Madame Dauphin, 
If that isn't just the sweetest thing I've ever heard. Oh, and I have a man like you, Monsieur. I'll be like a hyper-intelligent squid in a candy store. I'll hugging and grasping and... Anyway, back to it, y'all. Back to it. Let's let the lovebirds have their moment in private. Ooh, don't you just want to eat them with a tiny little spoon till there's nothing left but bones? You incompetent, idiotic... Impatient, too, so let's get out of here pronto. And why? Why should I listen to a word? Because, goddammit, there's another security camera looking right at you. Then I see it over Juno's shoulder. A camera, embedded in one false flower of a nearby bouquet. A clear fake, an obvious fake, and one I'd nearly missed. So certain was I that I'd memorized every location. Get up. Walk with me. We'll talk closer to one of the cameras you knocked out. I follow him weakly feeling suddenly feeble and old. Am I losing my touch, I wonder? Has my mind begun to fade like my looks, my energy? And all I can think of is my debt, the constant weight of it pinning me, and I feel it growing heavier as I grow weaker. Hey, are you even listening to me? Hmm? I was telling you that our research is outdated. Everything Buddy pulled for us. No, no, that's impossible. She gathered it just yesterday. I checked it myself. Yeah, well, yesterday sounds real impressive or whatever. Until you account for the fact that Zolotobna boosted security around here at 2 a.m. this morning. This morning? But that's... so incredibly insecure. Her team would have no time to test anything. Almost got you, didn't it? You're one of the best. One of... what? I started to suspect our intel was off and I couldn't find Nova Zolotov anywhere in the crowd. Based on the profiles I read ahead of time, I gathered that our mark had to be really hands-on at in-house galas and had to see everybody's reactions, but nobody had seen Zolotov. Or so they thought. And so, Zolotovna... Hell of a haircut she's got. In a room of paparazzi and busybodies, she was the only person here that nobody knew. Worth talking to, I figured, and she was so proud of herself that she told me about her big reveal pretty much right away. Lady's got zero restraint, I swear. Zero restraint? And yet you believe she's some great mastermind of security? That the last-minute surveillance switch was a deliberate plan? Not a mastermind. Uh, The opposite. She's dangerous because she's so goddamn rich that everyone's afraid to tell her she doesn't know anything. It all looks unique, sounds showy, but it's just kind of a mess. She hired private security but wouldn't give them real blasters because it would ruin the decor. Hell, Rita told me that the password to her uncrackable account system was remember to change the password to something better later, Nova. Being surrounded by nothing but yes-men makes you an easy mark, sure, but it also makes you unpredictable, because you won't throw out even the worst oh, ideas. Dogs. These are uh, shrimosas made of myself, honey, because I was thinking, we always put the shrimp in cocktail sauce, so why not put a shrimp right in your cocktail? So that's orange juice, horseradish, yeah. Case in point. He always assumed she handled her affairs herself. Where are these yes-men? Exactly. Come again? You know what would happen if I tried to blow a billion creds on my own statue? Rita would stop me. Probably you and Jet and Buddy and, uh, hell, we'll invite Vespa, too. You would all jump out of the goddamn woodwork to stop me. Beat the hell out of me, probably. So why didn't anybody stop her? Because they never stop her from doing anything. Exactly. She has the globe because she's the cash cow for the people we're after. But she doesn't know a goddamn thing about it, and she couldn't even name one pharma megacorp she's actually invested in. She's never even heard of the Board of Fresh Starts, and honestly, I can't tell what's worse, you know? The people who built those goddamn debtors' tag thieves in Cerberus Province, or... People like her, who just have money and throw it wherever they have to in order to make more of it. To be completely honest, I'm not sure I've ever heard of the Board of Fresh Starts either. It sounds distantly familiar. One of the many organizations Buddy listed during our family meeting, perhaps? And now that Juno has made it relevant, I feel... Well, embarrassed, I suppose... I don't think I've felt that way in a very long time. Juno takes an inefficient moment to stare at Nova Zolotovna again, and for the first time I can tell what that stare actually means. He isn't taken by her, distracted by her poise or her looks. He's studying her, examining her, and he does not like what he sees. I realize, despite myself, that I do like what I see when I look at him. There's a hardness in his jaw, a carved-out sharpness in his eyes and his scars. She morally outrages him. I can now tell. And then I realize I've become distracted, too. All right, 
y'all. Get your dancing shoes on because it's time to trip that light fantastic. Take it away, gentle band. Juno. Hmm? The ball is starting, and I don't intend to leave here without that globe. Me neither. Then, may I have this dance? Thought you'd never ask. My Juno, you are quite the dancer. I never knew. Had a good teacher. And it shows. How versed are you in sleight of hand? Sleight of hand into pocket? Not bad. I shoplifted about a quarter of my lunges between the ages of 8 and 11, but you're the master, so... Master or no, I've too many eyes on me now. Ms. Zolotovna's especially. Really? Let's find out. Dip me. With pleasure. Whoa, yeah, she's staring holes through you, isn't she? Only through my clothing, I believe, but it does make stealth more difficult. Spin. Sure thing. Damn, Dauphin, you're not half bad yourself. Quite. Did you see the Gilded Globe's location in relation to us? Sure. Excellent. We're going to switch partners now, several times if necessary. I will make my way towards Zolotovna and distract her. You will approach the globe, store it in your gown, and then meet me at the edge of the ballroom floor. Does that sound acceptable? Yeah, Ransom. Yeah, I think I like this plan a lot. Smiles from Juno Steel come like shapes in firelight, flickering and unsure and inconsistent. I hold my breath near this one, lest a stray exhalation put it out. Then we squeeze hands and spin away from one another, I towards Nova Zolotovna and he towards our ultimate goal. I watch him for the first few minutes as he twirls from dancer to dancer, growing ever closer to that gilded globe, until I realize that I don't have to. I can trust him to do this on his own. Hello, handsome. I was wondering when I'd finally get to talk to you. Ah, Zolotovna! It's truly a delight to meet you at last, and how has your grand return to society been thus far? Oh, I've simply no time at all for pleasantries, Mr. Dolphin. I have just one request of you, one tiny thing, and I'm afraid you'll have to make your choice quite quickly, my beanstalk bow. Kiss me. Beg pardon? <laughs> well, my other half told me that you have quite the sense of humor, but Oh, I... damn your other half and kiss me! Why do you think I was so insistent on speaking with you all evening? Because even in this perfect party of my own design, you are the most perfect part of it. Because I saw you across the room, and I knew, my star-sent lover, that we were meant to be. Miss Solitope, Hush I... now. Don't deny it, sugar. Every time I've come anywhere near you, you've run off with your tail between your legs. Hiding your face, like a boy with a schoolyard crush. I want this. You want this. We're as sweet together as a moon calf and cream, and if you're ready to reach out and grab the future with a kiss, I will tie the wedding knot with you by morning. Your missus be damned. I know people who can make that marriage disappear, make her disappear if you like, and then we can run naked through the stars as we were always meant to. So kiss me, Dauphin, kiss me. The calculations occur automatically. When you live as I have for so long, clawing for payout after payout, the mathematics of income become second nature. And if Juno's readings on this woman are true, if she really can't keep track of her own finances, then this would not only be a payout today. If I were to play my cards right, I could bleed this woman of every investment she has, work her for years of payouts, decades, and finally remove that constant worry that has followed me across the galaxy as close and insistent as my own shadow. And that is so very tempting. I am not as young as I once was. Every year I must retire another con that relies on younger men's charms. Every month my skin and options slacken. The decades of late night research and eyes wide open have pulled more than exhaustion from me. It feels as if they have reached into the very marrow of my bones and siphoned away something fundamental, something I won't ever get back. And in the face of that, how can I possibly say no to Nova Zolotovna? Married by morning, you say? Sooner, if you like. I'll give you anything you want, Dumplin'. I'll give you Saturn on a string of pearls. Just kiss me. We never really change, I tell myself. And Juno will understand that. And he will understand why I have to do this. And then, I am thinking about Juno. About his righteous indignance. About his flickering smile. And more than that. I am thinking about the reasons it has come so easily for me to ignore him, to be cruel to him. 
because he is a different man from the one who left me in Hyperion City. Because he has changed without me. And I can hide in that distance and pretend I never felt for him at all. Across the room I see him spin past the globe and then it's gone. And a feeling swells inside me that is terrifying in its size. And for once, I do not file it under for future consideration. Oh, Mr. Dolphair. Oh, Ms. Zolotovna. My radiance, my beauty, my jeweled orbit. You have read me to the quick of my soul and seen the longing that lies within because it is you, Nova. And it was always you from the moment our eyes first met. Oh, I knew it! I knew it! But I cannot kiss you. What? Not yet, my love. Not yet. Our love, it's... it's... Forbidden. Oh, yes. Yes. Look at my wife, will you? That sharp eye of his. That jewel-studded eye patch. That gown. That gown! Have you ever heard of the Dauphins before? I, I think so. Of course not. And where do you think money like that comes from so quickly? You don't mean that Mrs. Dauphin is... Organized crime, my love. He terrifies me utterly. Hey, uh, honey, I think... Time for us to go, dear. Just listen to him, Nova. The voice of a killer. It sends shivers through my spine. Oh, my baby, sweet and pure and delicate as a sunspot on a Sunday. My security. I could have them. Don't you understand? He'll kill me if you do. No matter how fast your security is, he's faster. Just look at that eye. He's rubbing it an awful lot. Is that part of his strategy? No, that's just an eyelash. But... When that eyelash is gone, he'll be watching again, and I must away to him. Oh, my Nova, if only I had the creds to pay my debts to him, then perhaps I could... Money? Is it money you need? One billion creds. But I could never ask... Here! Oh, you just had all of these jewels on you, then. I like to keep them warm, honey. But that doesn't matter now. Nothing matters now. Go to him. Pay your debts. But only if you swear you'll find your way back to me. I swear. Swear it. I swear. Swear it. I swear, my love. Then I'll see you soon, Dauphin. Take care. Now, go. I must. Only the fare for a spaceship back here once I've done so could be quite pricey. Oh, of course. And then, of course, I'll have to stock up on my prescriptions, a a thyroid condition. Right, that goes well, sir. Oh, and could we make that ship ticket first class? It's just that my legs and they need the space. Here! Now, go, Dauphin. Go and please be safe. If it means seeing you again, my shiny Nova, I will never be more careful. What the hell was that? No questions. Just start walking. But quickly! Captain Orico, we're nearly at the door. and We're going to need that ride as soon as possible. I'll get Jet right on it, darling. Buddy out. What is that? I hope never to find out. I can't take another moment of the secrecy. Our enemies be damned. I... I love you! I said... I love you! And I don't care if your wife knows it! She looks like she's waiting for something. She's waiting for you to kill me, likely so that she can pull a deathbed confession of true love from me, and given that neither is going to happen, I recommend we turn our walk into a run. My god, Miss Zolotovna, the gilded globe of Reach's Far has disappeared. A very fast run. Go! Ooh, somebody stop them! Stop them! I think I'm about to faint! I'm seeing stars! Uh, 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 oh. oh, thank you for catching me, sir. Say, are you doing anything? Ransom, darling, it's Buddy. May I come in? I'd like to review the day's events with you. I thought we'd debriefed already at the family meeting. I asked if I could come in, Peter, not if we could review. I'll shout my feelings in the hall if you prefer. I've been told that I have a very good voice for shouting, one that carries well with strong diction and a force of enunciation that really emphasizes... Ah, there you are. Pity. I made myself quite excited to project my assessment of you across the carte blanche. I was particularly thrilled to tell everyone that you're a no-good... The door is open, Captain. Please, 
Come in. If I must. Well? I apologize if my tone seems short, Captain, but I've received quite a lot of criticism for my performance today already. You and Juno both, yes. Most of all from yourselves. Right. And so if you mean to critique me further... Well, your advice would be precious to me, but I may not be able to take any more feedback tonight. I'm not here to criticize you, Ransom. I've already done that. What? But... I don't repeat myself, darling, no. I think it's quite fair to say I never repeat myself under any circumstances whatsoever. Captain, you called me a no good... No good? Now what gave you the idea that I would say a thing like that? You're a very negative man, Ransom. I don't know much about you, but I do know that. A very negative man. The main question arising from this day, for me, is what the place of such a man is on my vessel, in my family. Sit, please. Captain Orinko, I assure you that however my performance was today, it won't be repeated. Is that so? A shame. I rather liked your performance today. You did? I did. It was not flawless. But flawless crime is so dull, don't you think? Life is very little without drama, and you don't learn a single thing if you never make mistakes. I'm about to be very honest with you. Is there anything you'd like to tell me before that? Buddy Orinko is not the first person to tell me that flawless crime is dull. A great thief told me that as well, many years ago, when I was just a child on New Kinshasa. Like everything that man said, my second impulse is to throw it out or file it away for the future. But my first impulse is always a pang of a feeling twenty years gone now. A heavy warmth that tells me I could just stay right where I am and be safe because someone else has pledged to keep me so. For the first time I see Buddy Orinko not as a tool to use to pay my debts, I see the woman, the legend I've wanted to meet since my earliest days in crime, and I feel that warmth from her for the first time. Well, is your conscience squeaky clean, then? I... <clears throat> I'm sorry to say that I did steal more from Zolotovna than I showed you. I apologize. I can get it right away. I know. You... what? I said I know you stole more. You're a thief, and one with heavy debts. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what gave you that impression. Do not lie to me, Pete. I don't mind a little thieving between thieves, and I can accept your requests for a pseudonym in privacy, but I will not allow deception within my family. Do we have an understanding? I suppose we do. May I ask where you found this information? Are you ready for me to be honest with you? Yes. Well, you may not like this, not Peter, not Ransom, but the fact of the matter is that the nameless thief has built up quite a name for himself. Don't ask how. All great talent develops its unique calling card, its fingerprint, and as a talent scout, it's my duty to read the future in those cards. And the fact is that your future doesn't line up. You have been involved in some of the most lucrative heists of the past century, and yet you've arrived on this vessel with nearly nothing to your name. Vespa's blood tests on you are clean. I don't recall giving any blood. And therefore you can't be spending your earnings on biochemical thrills. It is possible that you have an estate waiting for you on some quiet asteroid field somewhere, but given how often you work, I rather doubt it. If you own such a place, you haven't seen it in at least eight years, and beyond that you're not the homeowning type. Therefore, I can only conclude that you are in debt to someone. A very large debt, by the look of it, and one that isn't going away any time soon. Does that sound right? What, may I ask, are my calling cards? My fingerprints? You won't erase them, darling. No one can. Remind me, Pete, what is it that our family intends to steal? Juno and I just stole the Gilded Globe of Reaches Far. Which will lead us to... I was taught not to let future jobs distract one from the current. So you don't know, then? Hmm. An interesting stratagem. Though I think it would better fit a mercenary than it does us. We're after a bit more than a paycheck. Let's try it this way, then. 
Do you know why Nova Zolotovna had the map we were looking for? Why not some other art collector on some other satellite? Because of her connections to pharmaceutical megacorporations, including the board of Fresh Starts. And, uh... And that is all you know? Y- yes. I appreciate your honesty, and I'll repay it with some of my own. Nova Zolotovna is an entrepreneur, darling, and the majority of her money goes to pharmaceutical corporations that build debtors' tags, like the one my Vespa must wear, organizations that try to own those they claim to help. Zolotovna's money is one of the roots of their power. And when you're pulling out weeds, darling, you must always take a firm grip and pluck them up by the roots. And so, if we're going to steal the cure to all illness right from under those corporations' noses, it follows that we'd have to start here. The cure to all illness. The cure Mother Prime. So you do remember. I do. And the realization shocks me. The Cure Mother Prime. An object more myth than reality. A colony of microscopic alien life that produces Cure Mothers, which produce endless medicine. Cure Mothers for every illness. A panacea. It sounded impossible. But those diagrams she had, the video feeds, the evidence. By her own admission, it was not certain. We had everything but the final proof that this creature could really do what the legend said. But everything else was there. Documents proving that it was being held by the largest pharma megacorps, that it was important enough to them to guard more heavily than anything I'd ever seen. And we were going to take it. Yes, that's exactly it. Nice work, Peter. I realize I've been talking for some time, and I am sweating. I wonder if I'm growing feverish until I see my fingers shake. I'm just... excited. Despite my coolness, part of me has clung to the legend of the Cure Mother Prime. A vulnerable part of me, one I have tried to eradicate many times. I wonder what else I've filed away like this. My for future consideration suddenly seems less like a file and more like an overstuffed closet one that must contain so much that I always promised to consider and never did. We are not mercenaries in this family. And though each of us has their reputation, we are not legends either. We're better. A legend is an old story, a dead thing, frozen forever. And we are very much alive, still in motion. We must use that. I'm telling you all this in the interest of fairness, darling. You should know that this work means much more than money to me. We are going to do the impossible. We are going to steal a myth. And if all you're after is pay, we are not worth your time, and frankly, you are not worth ours. I assure you, Captain Orinko, that I am not solely here for the money. Any more? I'd attribute your eventual success today to that. I'm not so certain you wanted more than money this morning, however. And though I have my suspicions about what you're here for now, I can't say I know yet. This is all a very roundabout way of saying you did well today, Pete, at the end of things. I hope you repeat that success, and especially where that success came from. Do not let who you were this morning or last week, or last year, equal who you are today. Not even the greatest talent can afford to stagnate, darling. And I should know. I've tried. Now settle your debts, financial, personal, and whatever else, and get some rest. We'll be right back to work in the morning. Oh, and Pete, you asked about your calling card. I did, yes, but uh, I don't need An enduring moral core, coupled with a strong desire to excise that core completely. Demonstrated, of course, by a consistent pattern of pro bono work, followed up by a lot of con bono. Like having a heart embarrasses you. I brought you on this ship for that moral core. If I distrust you, darling, it is only because you have proven you can do anything you set your mind to, and so I'm certain you are capable of excising those morals for good. 
You just haven't done it yet. I... well... But, but why... I find that questions of why the self is the way it is are best answered by the self. And so I think I'll leave you to meditate on that. Good night. I'm still sweating lightly when Buddy leaves. I'm thinking about my excitement for the Cure Mother Prime and how well I hid it away. I am leafing through my file marked for future consideration, wondering what else I've missed, what other parts of myself I've buried in that dark and bottomless place. Memories of a great thief, of a floating home, warmth and laughter and the soft sigh of another beside me from a time when money wasn't my only concern. And then a person, one with a soft eye and a flickering smile, with soft footsteps in the dead of night I pretended not to hear of him. Yes, come in, come in. Hey there, Ransom. Oh, just close the door and drop the silly moniker. I already regret choosing it. Okay, uh, Peter then. And not that either. Everyone who's ever called me Peter has wanted to be my parent, even if I've only let a few fit the role. (coughs) So, please, just call me what you used to. But your name is... I've already torn the room apart looking for recording devices, and there are none. Just close the door if you would. Okay. So, Nureyev, I've been thinking that we should probably... um, Talk about us. So have I. I know you don't want to, but... Wait, what? I think we should talk, too. If you keep standing there while we do it, you're going to make me terribly nervous. Please, sit. Uh, cool. Thanks, Narev. Listen, I just... wanted to say I'm sorry. The last time we saw each other that night, I messed up. I don't know if that hurt or how much it hurt, but that doesn't matter. I shouldn't have just walked out. And, and he goes on like that for some time. I hear his apology, but more than that, I hear his voice, and I hear him. This new Juno Steel who does not bite when you examine his scars, who bears wet wounds to you with wet eyes. He has stopped talking now. It is clearly my turn to speak, but I don't have the first thing to say. I feel the weight of potentiality sit heavy on my shoulders. I hear Buddy's words about the excision of my moral core and about my ability to do it. And I realize, for the first time, that there is a kind of helplessness in complete freedom. If one can drift wherever one wants, one never needs to change. When one's surroundings no longer fit one's needs, why, just leave. Find new surroundings that do. When trouble arises, I disappear. That impulse is still strong in me. Hearing the weight of this apology, seeing his anticipation, feeling that this is the crossroads Buddy spoke of condensed into a single moment. Escape sounds so easy. But looking at this new man, respecting what he has made himself into and perhaps even envying it, There is nothing I want more than to stay. If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider donating to the Penumbra on Patreon. Our artists work tirelessly to bring you these stories, and if you have the means, we hope you will support our efforts. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra Podcast. If you support us on Patreon at the $10 level or higher, you will receive access to commentary tracks like this one from actors Noah Symes and Sarah Gazdovich and co-creator Kevin Vibert. First uh, theatrical performance I did in Boston. (laughs) I played Sarah's mom. (laughs) (laughs) So we have a long and storied history of playing each other's mom. (laughs) (laughs) I guess, no, I guess this is making a circle. That's true. How the turns of tables. (laughs) Oh. Um, so, so additionally, uh, we talked about this a little in the last commentary, but 
Uh, Kevin, I would love to hear from a writing perspective um, uh, the idea of having a new narrator for this episode. Mm. Did you know that the Penumbra has merchandise for sale? It's true. The Penumbra has partnered with DFTBA to bring you the posters, shirts, pins, and socks your hearts desire. Just go to dftba.com and search for the Penumbra podcast. We would like to give special thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Minchowski, Choi Kwan, Hashtag Space Communism, Ariel Young, Liesling Voss, Lynn Go, The Diameter of Juno's Dress, N.B. Shaper, Jasper James, Kaylee Byers, Jameson Green, Caroline Seidman, Marielle Madden, Red L, Sophia Anderson, Izzy J, Kim Dauber, J. Yanazelli, Karen Z.H., Reagan, Kim Zygan, and Jamie Gunter for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. This tale, Juno Steele and the Man in Glass, was told by the following people. Noah Symes as Peter Ransom, Joshua Elon as Juno Steele, Alexander Munoz as Nova Zolotovna, Sarah Gazdovich as Buddy, Chloe Cunha as Vespa, Alexander Stravinsky as Jet, and Kate Jones as Rita. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. If you wish to know more about our ever-expanding, infinitely creative team of artists, musicians, editors, designers, and managers, you can read about them in the show notes of this episode. I'm afraid that is our time for today, dear travelers. We hope you will join us again soon.